The mark of the beast, the Antichrist. Wars and rumors of wars. Ooh, interesting. Maybe not profitable, but interesting. What do they all have in common? This simple phrase, the last days. When you think of the last days, what do you think about? What images or fears come to mind? Let's talk about that, and then I'll come back and talk about the last days.
The term, the last days, is only used four times in the entire New Testament, which is somewhat surprising because there's a lot more talk about it today. And we talk about the beast and the mark of the beast, the Antichrist and the sevens of Revelation, and are we in the tribulation period? What about the rapture? Question after question after question. I wanna point out something that might be surprising to you. I'm gonna read the four passages that mention last days. And you tell me what images come out of those passages, and do those images match your images of the last days? The first one is from Acts 2.17. In the last days, God says, I will pour out my spirit on all people. Your sons and daughters will prophesy. Your young men will see visions. Your old men will dream dreams. Does that sound familiar? That was the day of Pentecost. Like that came true on the day of Pentecost 2,000 years ago. Then Paul says this, 2 Timothy, but mark this, there will be terrible times in the last days. People will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boastful, proud, abusive, disobedient to the parents, ungrateful, unholy, without love, unforgiving, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not lovers of the good, treacherous, rash, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. What does this sound like to you? pick up any of the magazines on the end caps, we are in the last days, and we have been for 2,000 years. Now, I'm not denying that at the very end of the last days, there may be some unique times, such as the tribulation period and a rapture and the other things the Bible teaches. But don't be deceived. We are and have been in the last days. Peter warns us, above all, you must understand that in the last days, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming, he promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. So let me ask this. Does it bother you that Jesus has not come back yet? Does it make you question whether he will?
The coming of Christ is sure. Shows the destiny of the world. Peter says, by the same word, the present heavens and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. Again, 2 Peter 3.10. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief. The heavens will disappear with a roar. The elements will be destroyed by fire and the earth and everything done in it will be laid bare. There will be a new heaven and a new earth. Now, that's the discussion for an, another day. I'll say this right here, right now. There is a debate whether this world will be revamped, like it's going to be burned and then reconstructed, or whether God will destroy this earth completely down to the elements, which is part of what Peter says in this verse, like the nuclear elements, although Peter didn't know about nuclear physics, obviously, and then a brand new one created. I don't know how God is going to do it, but I do know this. Our eternal destiny is not a disembodied spirit floating on cloud nine. It is a resurrected body on a revamped new earth. That's good news. The problem is it's been a long time coming. And because it's been a long time coming, the false teachers that are among us, remember, that's the theme of Peter's second letter. The false teachers among us are seducing people away from the faith by saying, it's not gonna come. If it hasn't happened yet, it's not gonna happen. So live like you wanna live. Follow me into debauchery. And a lot of people are. What about you? What would you do differently if you knew Jesus was coming back one year from today? That one month from today? One week from today?
Let me shift gears in your discussion really quickly, and then we'll come back for a bit of teaching. By the way, there is a biblical answer to this question. Here it is. Why do you think the Lord has taken so long to return?
We actually know the answer. Why is the Lord taking so long to return? Second Peter 3, 8, 9. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he's patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. God's patience is kindness. For me, I'm not sure I want the Lord to come back today because I have three very close family members that would be lost forever if he did. I think the Lord is waiting for us to bring to him all those wandering sheep. That's why it's taking so long. It's not that God is forgetful. It's not that God is delayed. It's that he's kind and he wants more people in his heaven. But but there's something else. Look, Look at verse 12. As you look forward to the day of God and speed its coming, that day will bring about the destruction of the heavens by fire and the elements will melt in the heat. Two points. The elements will be destroyed. As I've already mentioned, there's going to be a revamping of the current heaven and earth. But the second statement in there that I find peculiar is that we could speed the Lord's coming. How would you speed the Lord's coming? That's a difficult word. Some understand it to be like intensely engaged. So you're not really speeding up the coming of the Lord. You're you're actively engaging yourself in preparing for his coming. But technically, that word doesn't mean to be actively engaged. It means to rush, to usher in the coming of Jesus. Is it possible that you could speed the Lord's coming? Let me read one other passage, and then we'll answer the question. Acts chapter 3, Peter is just preached on the day of Pentecost. 
and now he's healed a lame man. And in that sermon, he says, repent then and turn to God so that your sins may be wiped out, that times of refreshing may come from the Lord, and that he may send the Messiah who has been appointed for you, even Jesus. Heaven must receive him until the time comes for God to restore everything, as he promised long ago through his holy prophets. Here's the challenge. It looks from Peter, his preaching in Acts 3, that by many people converting to Christ, we could in fact bring in the times of refreshing. That when the last person that God wants baptized is baptized, Jesus comes back. This is an intoxicating thought for me and for our church. Imagine if the last person before the coming of Christ was baptized on your campus this week. Like you're buried with Christ and raised and then whoo, raptured. Unbelievable opportunity. Now, many people say, well, no, God is going to determine the time of the end. Really? Why? Why do you think that? If you go back to the Old Testament, the Israelites wandered in the wilderness for 40 years, right? 40 years. How long does it actually take to walk from Egypt to Israel? Like even with old women and children, how long does it take? Not 40 years, 40 days. And they got there in 40 days and they sent in the spies and the spies came back and said, we can take the land. Two of them said that. 10 of them said, no, they're giants. They got big walls. The people listened to the 10, not the two. And God said, okay, then you're going to wander in the desert for 40 years. It was not God's intention. He had a 40 day plan. We turned it into a 40 year plan. And I wonder if the coming of Jesus is not delayed, not because God has it way out on a calendar, but because we haven't completed the task that God has given us to do. And imagine if our church could be so evangelistic that we reach this valley for Jesus Christ and other churches all over the world take seriously the last command of Jesus as their first priority. What if we could usher in the coming of Christ by doing what he told us to do? So I wanna ask you, here's the challenge. Read together. 2 Peter 3, 11 to 18, and make a list of all the things Peter suggests we should do in the last days to prepare for our Lord and possibly to usher in his coming. Thank you. 
Thank you.